so many of us in the church, we read the Word of God. We confess the Word of God. We memorize the Word of God. And all that is well and good. But we still continue to live our lives walking by sight and not by faith. Okay? Can you say amen? Or, or oh me, you know. Sometimes it's oh me or maybe even oh well, you know. But the Bible says that those of us who are born again, that we walk by faith and not by sight, okay? So something radical has to change on the inside of us so that we can begin to take on a whole different perspective of the way life happens, okay? In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says that we are not to be conformed to this world. What does that mean? That means that we're not supposed to fit the mold that the world is in. The world says that if you haven't got any money, that you can't pay your bills, and that you should be depressed. Okay? The world says that if you're, you're, you're sick, that you can't go to work. You know, the world tells you how to do things based on the circumstances that are in your life. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that, I'm going to go, continue to go back to this, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Does that mean that we ignore everything that's happening in the world? No. But what it means is that when it comes to where and how we make decisions, that we make the final determination based on what the Word of God says, okay? I like to think of it this way. The word walk is kind of a military term, okay? If you were to, to give someone orders and say, march, what does that mean? That means feet do your duty. <laughs> right? And, 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 and have corresponding actions to the order that was given. And so, if we walk by faith, then what we're to do is we're to, to give orders to our body to march to the beat of a different drummer. Okay? Now, some of you don't think that you can actually do that, but you can. And this morning was a great example, you know? We sang that song, you are free to run, you are free to dance, you are free to all of that. And we didn't look no more free than anything I've ever seen. But then we got orders, right? We, we, we got to a place where we could command our body to march to the beat of a different drum. And we went back and sang the same song, but to a different beat. And every one of you, on one level or another, experienced freedom at a greater level. Okay? That's what it means to walk by faith. Okay? So, the situation that I found myself in, listen, if I told you my whole story, you all could feel sorry for me, and, 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 and listen, some of that probably would have made me feel good, okay? <laughs> but it wouldn't have done me any good, you see? I got to a place where, I mean, listen, I would say the right stuff to you, but sometimes my poor wife would have to listen to me talk about the symptoms that were going on in my body. And finally, I wish it would have come earlier, but I finally got to the point where I said to myself, you know what, it doesn't do any good to meditate and continue to talk about the negative. If I could articulate in the most specific terms how I felt, it wouldn't do anybody any good. It wouldn't change my circumstance or my situation. What I needed to do was I needed to get in the Word of God and see what the Bible says. I needed to see that I could mount up with wings as eagles. You know what I'm saying? I, need, I, need, I needed to, to recognize that greater is he that's in me. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Whatever circumstance you're the greater one lives in you. Amen. Are we going to let the greater one out? 
(laughs) How do we do that? We do that by faith. We do that by faith. And when we take a step of faith, God meets you at that at that place, and the supernatural takes place when our faith connects with the Word of God, okay? Does that make sense? I mean, it's it's really simple if you think about it. If we would just read the Bible and act like it's really true, (laughs) if we act like it was really true, I met somebody not too long ago, and listen, if you're here and you're a guest this morning, or whether you're a regular member of our church, I've got a question for you. Are you interested in learning more about your faith? Are you interested in just learning more about what the Bible says? Or are you looking for a living experience and a living relationship with the God who is raised from the dead and who lives among us and is willing to pour out his his glory to a people who are willing to receive it? Amen? Amen. See, there are a lot of individuals who, we've had people come to this church, and you know what? They don't know what to do if a prophetic word comes, you know. They don't know what to do if if somebody, if we really believe God to heal sickness in our body. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you something, that the same God that delivered uh, Israel from the bondage of Egypt is alive today. The same God who flooded the world in the days of Noah is the same God who is flooding us with his love today. The same God who who became, who clothed himself in human, in a human fleshly body and dwelt among us for three and a half years and gave us an exact picture of what the Father looks like and said, follow me, is expecting you and I to enter and walk in a relationship as if it were true. It's not just a story. Okay? So, the Lord spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, and he said this, he says, meditate on the word of God day and night. He didn't say just to meditate on the, God, on the Word of God for five minutes during your devotions in the morning. You see, the thing is, is that what you and I are experiencing in our lives is the fruit of what we meditate on day and night. And when I was contending for my victory and contending for my healing, can I tell you that not every day did I meditate on the truth of God's Word. I knew what it said. But sometimes the symptoms and what was going on was just, it was just overwhelming in some ways. But let me ask you a question. Did that change the Word of God? Did it change me? Well, in some ways, because listen, it's what you meditate on. What you meditate on is going to become your reality. Okay? So let's let's go ahead and look at this just for a moment, okay? Joshua chapter 1. Some of you haven't seen me with a real Bible. I've used an iPad for five years. There's something about having a a Bible in your hand, you know? Oh, gosh, I love this. Well, let's just go ahead and start at verse 1. It's just I keep backing up and... It says, Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given to you, just as I spoke to Moses." This almost sounds similar to the instructions that God gave to Moses 40 years earlier when he sent the 12 spies and he says, listen, I have given you this land. Was the land theirs? Was the promise theirs? 
what were they surrendering to? They were surrendering to their own fear. Because the 12 spies, 10 of them came back with a bad report. They went in, they looked at the land, they looked at the people, they looked at the cities, they looked at the walls, and they said, this land is too great and the people who live in it are too strong. And we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And so they were. Okay? And because of the mindset they had, because they were walking by sight and not by faith, because they were ordering their steps based on what they could see and not on the Word of God, they ended up in bondage and all of them died in the wilderness over the next 40 years. Did it change the Word of God? Did it change the promise of God? Not on any level. And so here we are in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, and the Lord is saying the same thing to Joshua that he said to Moses 40 years earlier. You see, I believe that the Lord is saying some of the same things to you today that he spoke to you five years ago. The question is, are we ready to receive what the Lord is saying? Are you ready to possess your promised land? Okay? I know the Lord's spoken to you. I know there are, are dreams, there are visions, there are things that you believe God's called you to do. And I want to confirm, it is the Lord, because Psalms 37 says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. What that means is that God will place His desire in your heart so that the thing that you long for the most is the thing that God created you for, okay? And so, but God didn't put that dream in your heart just so that you could talk about it teach on it, write a book about it. He wants to give you that land. All right? He wants to give you that land this year. Some of you, that land, He wants to give you today. Okay? He wants to give it to you today. So, here's, here's the Lord speaking to Joshua and said, Listen, Moses is dead. Now, therefore, rise up. Cross the Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to you. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given to you, just as I have spoken to Moses. Listen, if God says every place that I give, every place that your feet tread, I'm giving you, how many of you are going to sit in your seat? God, I thank you for your promise. I thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that every place that I, that I place my, my feet, you've given it all to me. Thank you for that promise. Underline it in your Bibles, okay? But sit in your seat and don't go anywhere and see how much land you get. <laughs> and then you'll say, but what about the promise of God? Where is the promise of God? Where are your feet? <laughs> okay? Are you walking by faith? See, the reason that we don't get up is because we don't believe it so. We give, a, we give ourselves the 75 reasons why I can't when all we need is one good reason why we can. Okay? And if the Lord says, every place that you place your feet, I've given you, then guess what? Feet do your duty. Get some land. <laughs> all right? So listen Oh, gosh, it keeps changing pages on me. Never had that problem with my iPad. <laughs> from the wilderness and this, this verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea towards the setting of the sun, will be your territory. Lord, can I tell you that the Lord has, in this house, the Lord has given us so much territory. It's more than you could ever think, more than you could imagine. And the Lord has placed it into your hands. The Lord is saying, listen, get up and begin to walk. Get up and begin to possess the land. So many times we're waiting on the Lord to do the very thing that he's called us to do. Okay? The Lord has already healed the sick. He's told us to what? Pray for the sick. How many of the sick? The. All. <laughs> Anybody who fits in that the qualifies for prayer, all right? So let's begin to take the land. Let's begin to walk every place that you place your feet. God is going to give you the land. 
No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Can I tell you that just as the Holy Spirit was with Jesus, so he is with you? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in this earthly tabernacle. And Jesus walked by faith and he released the power of the Spirit in his life. And you and I have that same resurrection power in us. And God saying, open your mouth and release it. Open your heart and receive it. Don't allow the enemy to beat you down when you have the greatest weapon <laughs> that has ever existed, the Word of God. Amen? So, he goes on and says this. He says, As I have been with Moses, I will be with you. Isn't that comforting? You see, God's always put someone in your life to be a mentor. Because the Lord could say, hey, I'm going to be with you. But if he says, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. Well, wow, I know how he was with Moses. That was awesome, wasn't it? He's going to be with you just like he was with Moses. Wow. Is that true? Is that you, Lord? Yes. Okay, sure. Okay, awesome. Good deal. Amen. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. That's a command, isn't it? He didn't say, listen, I'm going to be with you. Doesn't that make you feel good? <laughs> I'll be right here with you. Doesn't that make you feel good? No, he said, I'm going to be with you. Be strong. Be courageous. When he speaks those words, he is saying that you have the ability, you have everything in you, no matter what circumstance you face, to be strong and be courageous. This is a little bit of a side, but I heard the definition of the word courage recently, different than I'd heard before. And the word courage comes from two different words in the Latin. One means the whole heart, and the other means to tell your story. And so courage really is the ability to tell your whole story with your whole heart. Okay? That's what, what courage is. So when the Lord speaks to you and says, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. I want you to stand up. I want you to tell your whole story with your whole heart. And as you do that, I'm going to give you every place that you put the soles of your feet, okay? Be strong and be courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers, to give to them. Only, see, he reiterates it again. It's so important. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do everything according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or the right, so that you may have success wherever you go. We need, you know, you ever, you ever see a horse in a horse race? You know, they put these things on their eyes. They're almost blinders, but I guess they are, sort of, because they can only see one way. I think the Lord wants to put blinders on our eyes. I, I think I need blinders. How about you? I, I, there's only one focus that you and I need to be successful in our lives, and that is we need to know what the Word of God says, and we need to have tunnel vision. We need to have absolute tunnel vision. Somebody says, well, hey, we'll look over. No, uh -uh, I can't look there. I've got to keep my eyes on Jesus. He's the author, he's the finisher, and he's everything in between. And if I get myself distracted by the things of the world, then I'm going to miss out on the land that God has given me, and then I'm going to have to take another lap. And the Lord's going to say, you're going to take another lap. He's going to say, I'm with you. Be strong. Be courageous. I'm giving you the land. Are you willing to take possession of the land? 
You see, the Lord gives you the land. It's up to you and I to take possession of the land. The Lord has given you your healing. You have to possess your healing. You have to contend for your healing. This, this is what I was going to talk about today. I was going to talk about are we contending or are we pretending? Are we contending for the promise of God? You've got to contend. The Lord has given you the land. You must possess it. Amen. If you don't possess it, you'll take a lap and the Lord say, I want to give you this land. Be strong and be courageous. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it for five minutes every morning before you go to work, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Is that what it says? That's that five-week dust thing that's going on with me still. No, it says that you shall not you shall meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Have you ever meditated on something day and night? Can I tell you that worry is nothing more than meditating day and night <laughs> on your circumstances? Don't tell me you can't meditate day and night. You do it all the time. <laughs> what is the object of your meditation? All right? You can meditate. When you begin to see and taste that the Lord is good, when you begin to embrace the possibility that the land that's in front of you, though it may seem to you like it's filled with giants, that it's got walled cities, but when you really begin to see that God has given you that land, And it's only up to you to possess it. And the way that you possess it is be strong and be courageous. Can I tell you another word for that? Have faith. Amen. Be strong and be courageous. What's that mean? It means with your whole life and your whole heart, believe the word of God. That is courage. <laughs> it's believing the word of God with your whole heart and your whole life. If we can live our lives that way, you will possess everything that God has for you. Can I tell you this? You already possess it. You already have it. We just want to see it in the natural, right? But you've already, you've got to possess it first in your heart because we walk by faith. It's, it's, it's the way of the kingdom. You see, if you're waiting to see it before you believe it, you'll never walk in the reality of it. We've got to, ooh, I'll tell you. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to come. He's the one. God not only asks us to walk by faith, but he gives us the faith that we're to walk in as a gift. Because the Bible says that faith works by love. Amen? So many times we work on building up our faith, and really all we really need to do is work on our relationship. The more... The stronger and more natural your relationship is, the more faith just flows. You know? I have faith in my wife because I love her with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I don't have to try. You know what I'm saying? God loves you that way. When you're able to receive his love, the natural response to that is going to be faith. And when you rise up with faith, you're going to have courage to... Uh, be strong and possess the land. So this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You'll meditate on it day and night so that you may careful, be careful to do all that is written in it. For then, you, then you will make your way prosperous. Man, I never saw that before. Who will make their way pro prosperous? When you meditate on the word of God, when you meditate on the promises that he has for you, it says that you will make your way prosperous. Isn't that cool? That means that you have the power yourself to determine whether you're going to be prosperous or not. 
You have the ability to make your way prosperous, and you will as you continue to meditate on the Word of God. So then he goes in verse 9, and I'll finish up here. And he says this for the third time. For the third time, he says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed. Wow, how's that for a command? You want to hear a promise of God this morning? Do not tremble. Do not be dismayed. What does it mean to be dismayed? Afraid. Afraid. Yeah. To be beaten down. To be depressed. You see, when we experience these things, it's because at the moment we choose to meditate and to give strength to the negative. We have the ability to make our way prosperous. We have the ability in our freedom to take the land or to sit down. Hello? <laughs> Any of you feeling like a good beaten this morning? <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope you're hearing this. So he says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and be courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Man, there is no place that we can go where the Lord is not with us. You see, but our, our part is this. Our part is to, to uh, encourage ourselves in the Lord. Our part is to believe that he's with us, believe that when he says, I've given you the land, I've given you joy, I've given you peace, I've given you deliverance, I've, brought, I've given you healing, to believe that now you and I have to possess it, right? We've got to contend for the faith, all right? If we're not contending, more than likely we're pretending, all right? How many of you know there's a Super Bowl going on this afternoon, all right? How many of you think they're going to be pretending? Pretending at the Super Bowl. Pretending. Make believe. Yeah, yeah. Now, pretending, that would be called the Pro Bowl, <laughs> right? And if you see that, I mean, the pro ball, they get out there, you get the best players in the league, but they go out and they play patty cake on the field. <laughs> Nobody wants to get hurt. So they get out there. Oh, yeah, you can always watch the puppy ball. <laughs> but listen, if you want to be victorious in your Christian walk, you can't contend. You, you can't just pretend. Okay? Sometimes we're just pretending. We need to contend. And the way that you contend is you know in your innermost being, you know the truth. You know that God has given you the land. And you possess it in your heart by faith. And you order your steps. And you order your life so that no matter where you are, you're represent a living representation of who Christ is. Amen? And you can stir yourself up just like you did this morning. Do you know you can do that? Some of you are going to get way stirred up this evening. I know that already. <laughs> Some of you are going to get way stirred up during the Super Bowl. Because your team ain't going to, they're going to make a mistake. And I can see you sitting in front of your TV set. <laughs> you know what? We need to do that in our lives. We need to recognize who the real enemy is. And we need to contend for our victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, can I get you all to stand this morning? Sure. Yeah. Before, this, before we did this, what the Lord was speaking to me is that David was a man after God's own heart. And most of the time we think that that's because God loved him so much. Well, God did love him so much. But can I tell you, David was after God's heart. He wanted to know God's heart. He, I, David is a man, when I look at it, he almost lived outside of time. He... Um, David committed murder David committed adultery but he repented before God and then went on to live as a man forgiven and you know how he was able to do that outside of because at that time everything was based on the law he did it because he knew the heart of God and the only place we're going to find faith, we don't, we turn faith into another law. 
Just have faith. I don't have faith in my husband because I have great faith. I have faith in my husband because my husband's a great husband. I have faith because God is a great God. He's a good God. And I will only know that. The only place in the Bible that tells us to strive, do you know where it is? To enter his rest. To enter his rest. That means we get in there and we go after his heart. We go after it with everything we've got. We want to know his heart. David did things that under the law were illegal. He took his men into the temple and ate from the elements. You know, God didn't condemn him for that. He knew God's heart. We have to know God's heart to do this walk. So don't turn faith into this law. I can't say this because it's not faith, you know. And we've got to have faith in the Word. Well, the Word is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. We have faith in Him. And we aren't going to know that if we don't take time to be with Him and know His heart. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, God has land. He's given you. Every place you step with the soles of your feet, God has given you. There's dreams and visions that he's placed in your heart. Some of which you've become weary in well-doing, but God says, don't faint. Enter into his rest. Amen. This is going to be your year of breakthrough. Okay. God has already provided everything that you need. Now it's our turn to actually possess the land. How many of you ready to possess some land this year? Amen. Hallelujah. So if 